I almost thought you were grade nines. Um, and remember, um, I said yesterday that we are going to focus on bijvoeglijke naamwoorden adjectives from out this book, um, the Afrikaans Handbook and Study Guide. So here you will see, um, I put in a picture of the book. And what you, what the bijvoeglijke naamwoorden that we're going to do is also on page 14. So what I thought is before we start with today's lesson, I quickly just want to go back to bijvoeglijke naamwoorden and just quickly recap. Um, but very, very quickly. Um, because we've done zelfstandige naamwoorde, I quickly just want to go back to bijvoeglijke naamwoorde. So remember I said um, bijvoeglijke naamwoorde is adjectives. Um, and um, I gave, I said to you here, it, always describes the self-standige naamwoord. It is used for degrees of comparison and it also um, it's also um, used for intensive forms, intensive forme. And then I gave you the example, the trappe van vergelijking. I did give that to you guys. And then intensive forme was pot blow, silver squid. Um, and so on and so forth. But what I want to do is, um, okay, Halen, sorry, I will slow down. Um, I, it was just quickly recapping, but what I want to do now is I want us all to take a deep breath and close your eyes. In front of you, um, I want to you to see a box, a gift box. And this box is decorated, it's either blue, and colorful, oh, it's dull, and it's got a big red ribbon. It shines, it looks beautiful. And then I want you to open your eyes and remember that gift box is something I can see and touch, and therefore it is a noun in Afrikaans, a zelfstandige naamwoord. And every word that I use to describe that box, for instance, it's shiny. It's beautiful, it's colorful, or it's dull, is bijvoeglijke naamwoorde. In other words, adjectives. So it's almost like a fairy tale, bijvoeglijke naamwoorde. Because I use descriptive words, and if you read fairy tales or any uh, fiction, there's usually loads and loads of adjectives because they want to describe the nouns or the things to you. And that, my dear children, is a bijvoeglijke naamwoord. So, I want to just to recap, and that's how you will remember this. Now, I know some of you might be rolling your eyes now because you may think, oh, teacher Melissa is going to go through all of this stuff again. And yes, girls and boys, I am definitely going to go all of this stuff. And I know that you might be yawning. Even sometimes I yawn. But it's important that you know why each of these stuff can be considered as a bijvoeglijke naamwoorde. And also, if you follow all these rules carefully, you will be able to spell bijvoeglijke naamwoorde better. And even, well, uh, you will be able to spell it correctly. Okay. So remember now I said bijvoeglijke naamwoorde is in Engels adjectives. And um, there are certain ways in which we can spell these words. Firstly, if you've got a word such as glad eh, or genotvol, you'll see there's a short vowel and then it ends with a consonant. Now, when we want to use glad in a sentence to describe the soap, for instance, the syrup, then that word's going to have to change and it changes as follows. Glad has got a short vowel and then ends with a consonant. And when used in a sentence as descriptive, then I'm going to see there the the D doubles, in other words, the end of the, the consonant, it doubles, and I put an E at the end. So when I have a word which has got a short vowel and a consonant at the end, the short, well, the consonant is going to double, and I'm going to put an E at the back. All right. Then I've got twin vowels. If a word has got a twin vowel followed by a consonant, one of the twins uh, is going to fall away. And I'm going to put an E at the end of the word. Now, how I always remember twin vowels at bijvoeglijke naamwoorde is, oh, I'm so sorry for that. How I always remember twin vowels at the end of, um, at the inner word, and I have to put it in the sentence, is as follow. One of those twins eat the other twins. Do you see a vrede? That little E there, or twin vowel, he ate his brother or sister. Terrible, hey? 
and then um, I put it E at the end. Sparsham, twin vowels. He ate his brother or sister. Sorry, he ate his brother or sister. And it was followed by an E. Okay, so that was twin vowels. Short vowels, twin vowels. Please let me know if I'm too fast. Helen uh, told me I'm too fast and I slowed down. Please tell me if you don't understand. Double consonants. If I have a word that ends on double consonants, then it's only going to get an E at the end. The stool is hard. This, the um, chair is hard. You see that? Ends with two, the byvoeglijke naam um, ends with two vowels. Ach, not vowels, consonants. And it just gets an E. Flux ends with two consonants. It just gets an E. Then, if I've got the short vowel, see here we are back with short vowels. However, the short vowel is followed by an F. Then that F is going to have an extreme makeover. And that F is going to turn into two W's. You see there, and it's going to be followed by an E. So the word muff. You see, it's a short vowel followed by an F. That F decides, you know, he wants to get some new shoes. And that shoe turns into two W's followed by an E. The fell is grof. You see the grof there? Short vowel followed by an F. It turns into, that F turns into two W's and gets an E. Then a twin vowel plus an F. Again, I've got twin vowels and it's followed by an F. That F turns into um, one W and it gets an E. Remember, at short um, vowels, it's a double W. At twin vowels, it's only one W. All right, double consonants. If I have a word that ends, uh, a bevoeglijke naam word that ends with two consonants, half, do you see, L, F, skurf, R, F, then that F is going to turn into a W again, and it's going to get an E. The eier is half, the, um, the, the egg is half, this is a halve eier. My hande is skurf, die skurve hande. Then a short vowel followed by a G. If I have a short vowel, the word sach, that adjective sach, that, is a, that A is a short vowel and it's followed by a G. Do you see there? Then I'm, I'm only going to add a TE. Lich, lichte, sach, sachte. Are you all still with me? I hope so. I don't see any yeses. Are you all still with me? Hmm. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Now, if I have got a long vowel followed by a G, long vowel. So remember, it's about sound here. This was a twin vowel, but it's but this is now a long vowel. It's pronounced long. Wuch followed by a G. It's much the same. Then that um, G is going to turn into something else. Wuch, it's going to turn into um, a deal taken here. You see here, there's lots of deal takens used. And if you've got this book right there in brackets for yourself, letter grepe or syllables. Because usually, well not usually, always when you see a deal taken here, it means that there is syllables being used. All right, so wuch, um, if I want to fit it into a sentence, a byvoeglijke naam word sin, then it's going to be a wuhberg. Die stoel is laag, die laag stoel. Die kind is moeg, hy is a moe kind. Die trein is vroeg, dit is a vroege trein. So this one is something you're going to have to go and study by heart. And now, a long vowel, vowel followed by a D. Look there, the water is koud. The coat is the adjective. If I've got a long vowel and it's followed by a D, then that D is going to turn into an E at some of them. Or it's going to turn into, look there, the man is out, the O man. It's going to change to fit into the sentence. And that stars mean that there is um, exceptions. Look there. Die water is koud, koude water. Die water is breed, the de, the, the, sorry, the D turns into a E, but that's only good. for spelling purposes, that's going to be a, a deal taken here. 
die straat is wijd, wij is straat. En dan exceptions. Die man is oud, dit is een oud man. Die bok is dood, dit is een dode bok. Kind is goed, dit is een goede kind. You see the sounds there, the end, the klanken. And that is the long vowel plus the D. All words, all adjectives that ends on a look. Look there. The course is smart look, which means the course is lacquer. Like nee. Um, tasteful. Smart look. It ends on a look, then it only gets an E. The som is moeilijk. Look gets an E. Then words ending in an IG. The tain is prachtig. The, the garden is pretty. The word ends on an IG. It's also just going to get an E. The prachtige tain. The man is biesig. I A M G. Biesige man. Adjectives ending in an ing in English. So if you've got an adjective and it ends on an ing in English, look here. Kookende. Kookende becomes boiling in English. Nee. Then it gets a ende. The ship sink. It's a sinking ship in English. It ends on an ing. So in Afrikaans, sinkende will have a ende. This is a lucky one to remember. The full sink. It's singing birds. In English, it ends on an ing. That means in Afrikaans, that adjective will get an ende -E at the end. Okay. Just quickly here to remember. Colors never change, which means it's always going to be a rooi rook. Die rook is rooi, die rooi rook. Die sneeuw is wit, this wit sneeuw. So colors always stay the same. And then I'm not going to go through all of these with you guys, but these are the words in Afrikaans that never changes. The coffee is bitter, so it's going to be bitter coffee. The vechter is dapper, the dapper vechter. These are stuff you're going to have to go and study by heart. Then at the bottom there, words, expression, emotion gets an E. The bedelaar is arm, this is arme patient. So words that expresses emotion in Afrikaans. Then it's going to get an E. Look here, the coffee is better, which means the coffee does, um, I don't know what's the English word for that, the coffee doesn't taste very sweet. But if it's got to do with emotion, that same word, the offskate was bitter, this, it was a sad goodbye. Then it gets an E. So emotions gets an E. Words that don't change, it will just stay the same then. More exceptions. The man is lang, the lang man. The sinkie is jong, the jong sien. The clearer is neat, the never clearer. Study by heart. So remember, there will always be exceptions. I think there, is, there might be exceptions in English as well. But we must remember that in all languages, there is rules and stuff that, um, that just can't be changed. All right, so there is the book. If it's possible for you to get the book, please buy this. As I said yesterday, this is a, um, a wonderful book to have if you... Um, if you want to study some Afrikaans and you do it through English. Okay, so now we're going to do an activity. Remember, I'm here and we can do it together. But I see that we are 16, which means 14 of you are, are kids are in my class. So I want us all to participate in this class. Okay, I would like you to uh, look at this um, reference or re um, yeah, reference here. If you ever want to go and study some extra by Fuglike Naamwoorde, then on this um, website, you can get some extra. So take a snappy of this um, um, screen page at the end of the lesson, and then you will be able to um, see um, on this website some extra by Fuglike Naamwoorde. Okay, so they ask us the correct correcte form van die by Fuglike Naamwoorde tussen hakies. Remember now what I said. Guys, South Africa is a fantastic land for tourism. That doesn't sound correctly. So that word, uh, that word we must um, change so that it can fit into the sentence. That is a um, descriptive word, an adjective, and we want it to fit into the sentence. Therefore, South Africa is a fantastic land. So what happens to a word, a word that has... A, vowel, a long vowel sound and it ends with a, a consonant. What's going to happen there? Let me see in the chat box. Guys, I see now maybe term three we're revising. This is still um, 
um, work from yesterday and yes I'm doing revising for me it's very important to start with the basics in Afrikaans first that's why your very first lesson that you got from me I did um, sounding in Afrikaans so before I go on with the rest of the term stuff I quickly want to um, study this first so yes this is term three and we're doing some revising now um, I will quickly repeat the question for you we are supposed to use that adjective change it so that it would fit in the sentence now in English this sentence says South Africa is a fantastic country for tourism so that word fantastic or fantastis is an adjective please change it for me so that it would fit in the sentence South Africa is a fantastic land for tourism so that word ends on a long vowel followed by a consonant which means it's going to just um, have something added there and what would that word be? South Africa is a land for tourism. You must um, change that sentence of that word fantastis. Komolemo. I remember you asked for the presentation yesterday. I didn't forget. So after this presentation or class, I will email it to you quickly. Just remember to post your email address for me again. Okay, guys, let me do the first one with you then. Um, look at the, um, the answer there. Fantastische. South Africa is a fantastische land for tourism. Do you see there what I did? So it ended on a long vowel followed by a consonant, which means it just got an E. Thus say, thank you, Will. The next one. Ons land biedt een groot en interessant verscheidenheid aan elke toerist. Our country um, gives a interesting and big variety to, elk, uh, to tourism. So, it's a word that ends with two consonants and Will said it just gets an E, so it's going to be interessante. Well done, Will. Interessante. Good. Good. Thank you, Lucedi. Next one. Op die kabelkar na tafelberg te rai. Om die kabelkar na tafelberg te rai is a gewild kiese. Again, word that end. Ach, sorry, Will. <laughs> Levy. Thank you and Tlala Landla. So, it will be gewilde. Good. Thank you, um, Le Levi. <laughs> um, Mpumi, thank you. In die Magallisberge is daar kleervol. Oh, it is a Vowel ending with a consonant, what's it going to be? Kleervolle, and Levi said that it will be a double L there. Good, kleervolle. In Durban is daar die helder water om te ski, scuba en branders rai. It's going to, um, it's something to do with superlative form. In Durban is daar die helder water om te ski, scuba en branders rai. So it is a, it's going to have a super later form there. Let's see if you guys can figure it out. I'm gonna give a few seconds. Helderste, thank you, Livy. Okay, Helderste. Dankie. Die groot mensgemaakte gat in die wereld is in Kimberley. Thank you, Landla. Let's go to number six. Die groot mensgemaakte gat in die wereld is in Kimberley. Again, super light to form. Mpumi, it will be grootste. Thank you, Levi. Touriste wat lemoene in die Gamtoos Valley in die Oostkaap koop, is beslis slim. Aha, look here, slim as die wat in die winkels gaan koop. Ends in a um, vowel with a um, consonant. What was going to happen? Tourist. Um, is beslis slimmer. Yes, so um, Natalie, it will be slimmer. So I think you just needed an R there. Nee, yeah, slimmer. Thank you, Levi. Next one, and, and also Gomo, Lemo, and Natalie. Ntlandla, thank you so much. Pumi, thank you for participating. Now, number eight. Die lang rye van motors bly die Walter Sisulu Nationale Botanische Tuin gaat ding. And um, 
<laughs> is een goed, is een wat aanduiding dat het een gewild plek is. So hier is sommer 3. Die lang rye Yes Natalie van Motors by die Walterse Sulu Nationale um, Botanische Tuin en Gating is een goed. What would that turn into? Remember now, long vowel sound to, uh, with a D at the end. Goeie, ja, mooi, Nintlandla. Aanduiding dat het een gewild plek is. Dat sy. Um, Levy just said there to us, it's lang goeie gewilde. Well done, it's correctly. Now, the next one. It's got two in it. In den popo sal jy vroeg as gewoonlik moet opstaan. Wanneer jy in die kreerwiltuin is. Met soms omkoms, uh, omkoms, jaag die lius makkelijk. Omdat hulle honger is. Ok, so hulle sê die, you said vroeger there. It is vroeger, but look at the spelling that I'm going to give now. En dan met soms opkoms. Jag gewoonlik, jag die lius makkelijk omdat hulle honger is. What would that makkelijk turn into? Makkelijker, yes. Good, thank you guys. So, there is the answer. Vroeger, makkelijker. Look at the spelling of vroeger. It's that deal taken one that I said you should make a, um, um, a, uh, a, a, in that book you must make a star there to look at the spelling. Last one, I think. Dalstroom is bekend vir sy moegvissermanne, dis die goed plek om vlieghengel te doen. Dilstroom is bekend vir sy moegvissermanne, dis die goed plek om die vlieghengel te doen. Kijk, okay. moe, moe, look there, deelteken, and beste, dis die beste plek om te oefen. Asai, and I think that is it with this, um, this um, PowerPoint. Oh, no, there's another one. Look at me here. I've made sure that we are working today. Nee. Nummer 11. Om net voor een half dag door die klein karoe te rui, sal jou weer die stil, stilte en die mooi van die wijd vlaktes laat waardeer. It will be helfte with an E and weie. Look at the spelling here. Halve. Remember I said that F is going for an extreme makeover, so it will become a W. And vaya, long vowel sound. Yes, thank you. I see that you guys understand this work. Okay, um, quickly, just my email address. I quickly want to run back to that email address. It's going to be a long road back. Sorry, man. <laughs> I need you to quickly just get that email address. Please send me an email, a blank email to this um, email address if you want this email, um, this slide, please. So there it is, Melissa with two S's, pinar.atg at gmail.com. Please take that email address and um, make sure that you send me a blank email so that I can send it to you. Um. Okay. There is my email address for you guys again. So if you want this, blank email as soon as possible in my email, in my inbox, and I'll send this first one to you. Okay, I'm quickly going to run to um, to the next PowerPoint there. Okay, can you all see this email? I hope so. Great. Okay, let's start with this one then. So the so we've done self-standige naamwoorde and byvoeglike naamwoorde now. So that was part one of woordsoorte. Now we are going to part two of woordsoorte. And this will be um, werkwoorde and bywoorde. Okay, so if you see werkwoorde, you must see somebody doing stuff. And if you see bywoorde, you must see a honeybee working and working and working and working to help the action word. Okay, so um, this will be woordsoorte part 2. Let's go for it. Werkwoorde 
in Afrikaans is also known as gesegdes. And it is verbs in English. Yes. Okay. So there you go. Werkwoorde is gesegdes and known as verbs in English. And this is what we know so far. Wat weet ons? Ons weet die werkwoord die een actie of een handeling aan. So we know that um, it is an action word. It's also known in Afrikaans as doen woorde. Do words. Nee. And it's an action word which I've just stated. And we have four types of werkwoorde in Afrikaans. Known as zelfstandige werkwoorde. And then under that, that is known as oorganklik, onoorganklik, onpersoonlik and wederkerend. The second type is hulpwerkwoorde and that is usually hulpwerkwoorde van tijd, wijze of vorm. Three would be koppelwerkwoorde. And then four, the infinitive. And I think in English that would be infinitive. Okay, so take a snappy if you want this quickly. So those are the four types of werkwoorde we get in Afrikaans. I had a question this morning. A children say that they only have laptops and then they can't take um, a, a picture. Remember, you can take a screenshot with, um, with, um, with your computer in order to get this slide. Okay, so let's start with the first one, which is called zelfstandige werkwoorde. All right. Zelfstandige werkwoorde can stand alone in a sentence. Okay, so hulle kan alleen staan in a sin. We get four types of zelfstandige naam of werkwoorde, namelijk oorganklik, onoorganklik, onpersoonlik en wederkerend. And let's start with the first one there. Zelfstandige werkwoorde, which will be the oorganklike zelfstandige werkwoord. And that would be Dit woord dier die voorwerp en um, gevolg. What is going on here? Okay. Dit woord dier een voorwerp, which is an object gevolg. So I'll get the verb and then after the verb, there will be an object. Dis as jy wie en wat kan aandui, is dit een oorganklike werkwoord. So just a direct translation there. If you can look at the verb and you can say who and what, um, is, is being um, stated there, then you know it's a oorganklike werkwoord. And an example, die man eet de appel, eet, is de oorganklike werkwoord, want na hom volg die voorwerp. Look there. Eet is my oorganklike werkwoord, want na hom is dit die object, the object. So whenever you have a selfstandige werkwoord, and you want to know whether it's oorganklik, then you look at it, and if the object is um, after it, then you know it's oorganklike werkwoord. And I can also um, ask a question. Who is eating the apple? And wat eet hy? So then we know oorganklik. Are you all still with me? Yes, ma'am? No, ma'am? I think you are all with me. You are clever kiddies. Yes, Lissetti says yes, yes, yes. Great, great, great. I'm happy to hear. Let's go on. The second one. So, selfstandige werkwoorde, the second type of selfstandige werkwoorde. Uh, boule. Okay. Boule, quickly tell, um, type to me where you are not so sure. Then I'll explain it to you again. No problem. Are you not sure of oorganklike werkwoorde? Or is it um, the four types? I'm quickly just going to... Uh, boule, I'm quickly explaining this to you again. So, we've got four types of um, of werkwoorde. And it is called a selfstandige werkwoord. And then the selfstandige werkwoord is divided into four types. The second types of verb will be hulpwerkwoorde. And that is divided into tijdwijze vorm. And then we get koppelwerkwoorde and infinitive. So those are the four main types of werkwoorde. Okay, so this is the first type. It's, it can stand alone and it's got four um, types underneath it. Oorganklik, onoorganklik, onpersoonlik, wederkeren. Um, and then the first one would be oorganklik and that is usually the verb and then followed by the verb is the object. 
So, and you can also answer a question saying that if I can ask who and what that verb is about, then I know it's a urgentlijke werkwoord. Look here in the sentence, the example. Die man eet die appel. Eet is my urgentlijke werkwoord, want na hom kom die object. Uh, can you give us examples? Yes, I can. Um, the, okay, I must go to a website quickly, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm rather going to do it this way. I will go and have a look for a few sentences um, and then I can put it in the chat box for you tomorrow. Would that be fine? Because then I can have a few examples. Can I just have an indication of that's fine to you guys? I'd rather um, give you proper examples than thinking of it. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to have a few examples for you and then I'm, I'm going to bring it to you to tomorrow's class and just put it on the screen quickly. Okay. I see that. Say so it's yes, 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 man. So then I'm going to do that for you. I think I've also got a summary of all of the woordsoorten, which I can give to you at the end of all the um, woordsoorten that we're going to do. Then you can study from the summary. That would be good. Okay, so selfstandige werkwoorden. So this is the second type of selfstandige werkwoorden, which is called um, um, selfstandige werkwoorden onoorganklik and onoorganklik word nie dier die voorwerp gevolg nie. So remember I said oorganklike werkwoorde, which was the previous one, gets followed by the object. But onoorganklik, it means the exact opposite. It doesn't get followed by the object. So hulle ry ver, and then look here. They are driving very far. Ry is the werkwoord, and now it is behind it, which means ver vertel my van ry. It's almost like, and it's not the case at all, but it's almost like ver is, um, is like a bywoord. Okay, the next one. Selfstandige werkwoorde onpersoonlik. This is onpersoonlik, which means it's not, it's almost like you're describing something very coldly. So onpersoonlijke, selfstandige werkwoord refers to, it doesn't um, show me a specific ding. So it dui nie op iets specifiek nie, nie specifieke dier, persoon of ding nie. So it's not something specific. So it won't be a specific animal or person or thing. And the example there, dit reen al lang hier in die koroe. Um, reen dui nie op iets specifiek nie. Um, I see there's a question about the code for Google Classroom. I'm not sure about that. I can just ask our host, maybe. Um, uh, Mr. Eugene, I don't know if you maybe have an idea there. What is the code of, of Google Classroom? I don't even know how that works. Do you perhaps know? If you can maybe just type us there an answer, please, sir. Let's give him a, a chance and then we can go on with the class. So, Lesseri and Bule, I would like you to concentrate now and then I will get back to you with that answer as soon as we are done with the lesson. Because I see our time is also um, going on and on and on and on now. Okay, so let's just quickly get back here. Recap with me. A onpersoonlijke, selfstandige werkwoord is when it is not referring to something specifically. The verb doesn't refer to something specifically, like in, it doesn't have a specific dier or persoon of ding. Look at the example. Dit reen al lang hier in die karoe. Dit, the word dit, doesn't make it sound very personal. It's almost like it's coldly referred to. And reen is my verb. Reen dui nie op iets specifiek nie. But actually I want you to focus on the word dit. Dit is such a, um, um, an impersonal word. I hope you are all um, with me still. Guys, I'm going to ask you yet again, please do not focus on Google Classroom now. Focus on the words. I will get back to you with that. Uh, okay, Natalie, I'm not sure. 
Yes, 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 that. Good, good, good. I understand what you're saying now. So that ref, um, is a reference to the object. Yeah, okay, yeah. But rien is the verb. Nee. Okay, let's go to number the second type of, um, or the fourth type of substandige werkwoorde. So this will be the last of the four types of the um, substandige naamwoorde, um, werkwoorde, which is the very first type of verb. And this one is called wederkerend. It's almost like a dance, this one. This is when the um, onderwerp and voorwerp, the object and the, the, the subject and the object is the very same thing in a sentence. So, hy vererg hom. Hy en hom is the very same, yes, it's an auxiliary verb. Hy en hom refers to the very same person. Okay, the next one. Soms, um, okay, so I've got a, 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 of a um, answer here from my host. I don't have any information regarding the Google Class and the past teachers set up their own Google Class for the students to access. Okay, guys, I'm going to um, have to come back to you with, with regards to that. So thank you so very much, Mr. Eugene. Um, I'm going to set it up and then... Um, find out how to do that and then I'll do my very best to do that as soon as possible. But now let's go back to Wiederkehren. So remember now the subject and the object is, uh, is uh, refers to the very same thing. Hy vererg hom, the hy and the hom refers to the very same person which means soms is die werkwoord altyd wederkeer. Oh, so here is an exception. Soms is die werkwoord altyd wederkeer. Um, most of the time the um, auxiliary verb is uh, the same. Look here. Sy was, die, sy was die motor. Nie haar self nie, daar is a directe voorwerp, dis oorganklike verb, of ander woorde. Sy was die motor. She's washing the car. So there's not a direct object and that is why it will be a oorganklike verb. Take a snappy of this, of this um, uh, slide please this is important please take a snappy and go and study this by heart and remember again that book that i spoke about earlier it's got all the information in guys it's such a good book i have actually looked on the internet if i could maybe find a pdf copy of it but i don't find it you have to buy the book which is terrible actually because i feel that it's such a it's a book that every child should have um, but yeah, unfortunately, it can't be that way. All right. And there is a reference. If you want to know a bit more about the wederkerende werkwoord, um, if you can maybe just go to Dr. Christa van Staden's website. Dr. Christa van Staden, there you will find the reference. And this was her example. And then you will also get a few other things. She's also got a lot of examples of all the verbs there that you can have. All right. Dr. Christa van Staden. Um, okay. So let's now go to the second werkwoord type that we get and that is a help werkwoord. Guys, I sort of get the idea that with verbs we're going to have to go into it again later on because it is quite a, um, it's a lot of information that we have to process and, and that's why I'm really going to make work of it to get you a proper summary of this. I'll even make a nice one for you. Um, so that you'll have a lack of summary to go and study from. Okay, so we've done self-standige werkwoorde now. Now we're going to number two, which is help werkwoorde. And this is helping hands there. Do you see that? It's helping, helping, helping. So this is when the help werkwoord is going to help the main verb. And here I've got a lack of explanation for you. The help werkwoord, look at it here can't stand on its own. If I uh, have a sentence and it's only got a help verb word in and no proper verb, then it won't make any sense, nee, in Afrikaans. This help verb word helps om die selfstandige verb word uit te druk. So, it helps the, um, the main verb. Alright. There is three types of help werkwoorde. So remember, the, this is the second verb and underneath that we get tight, weise and forum. 
All right. So, first we're going to focus on the Hulpwerk word van tijd. All right. Quickly read through that. Quickly read through that. It says there, Gee betekenis aan die selfstandige werkwoord. So, a Hulpwerk word van tijd. Gee betekenis aan die selfstandige werkwoord, which is the main verbs, in terms of time. It gives meaning to the verb in terms of time. All right. Then they also give us an example there. Einki het a gedig in die Afrikaanse klas geskryf. Geskryf would be my main verb. If I take geskryf out, then the sentence would read, Einki het a gedig in die Afrikaans klas. Then we don't know what the rest of the sentence is. In other words, that hulpwerk word of time there, gives us more information about the main verb. And that is why it's called a hulpwerk word van tijd. Good. Let's go on. The second one is a hulpwerk word van wijze. Manner. Nee. Help a hoewerk word om, die, om te kyk of die aksie waarschijnlijk of moendlik is. In English, the main verb is used to determine whether the action is possible. All right. Hulwerk word van wijze. It helps us to determine if the main verb, if the action of the main verb is even possible. And an example. Einki mag in die Afrikaanse klasse gedig skryf. If I take mag out, Einki in die Afrikaanse klasse gedig skryf. It won't make sense. So mag is telling us whether it is even possible for her to write a gedig in Afrikaans. All right. Make a little star here. Take a snappy of this. This is a very important one. And then the next. A hulpwerk word van vorm. This is form. Help a hoofwerk word om te kyk of die aksie waarschijnlijk of moendlik is. Again, it helps us to determine whether the verb is possible. Die gedig is dier eindkie geskryf. If I take us out, die gedig dier Anki geskryf, it doesn't make sense. Remember, hulpwerkwoorde helps the main verb. All right, let me quickly hear from my children here. Are you still all with me? I see our time is almost done. Okay, so let's stop here. And then from tomorrow we'll go on with koppelwerkwoorde. All right, listen to me carefully. I think I've promised you three things. An example of oorganklikes, I will do that for you. I've promised a summary, which I will try my very best to finish to you by, um, by Monday, if it's possible, if it's okay with you guys. And then I must go and find out about Google Classroom. So those are the three promises I made that I'm going to try and follow up on. And I will hopefully have everything for you on Monday. Can I get an indication if Monday is fine with you guys? Let me just hear. Is it okay if I can do this to you by Monday? Because I don't like promises made in a day's time. Good. Helen says yes. Great. And thank you for the compliment, <laughs> Lissidi. Okay, guys. I want you to put on your mask. Sanitize your hands. Get ready for the last few classes of today. Stay safe. I'll see you tomorrow. Well, not see you. I'll hear about you tomorrow. Have a good afternoon. Goodbye, guys.